everyone and welcome to another episode of Draw with Rob. With me, Rob Bidolf. Now then, I am a children's author and illustrator. Probably my most famous picture book, I would say, is this one. Odd Dog Out. It's all about a sausage dog who doesn't fit in with the other sausage dogs. But I do have a brand new book out. Brand new picture book, which I'm very proud of. And it's called The Blue Footed Booby. And it's a slightly different one for me, this, because I've done it in a kind of inky style. Look, that's the sort of secret hidden cover underneath the jacket. You can see that it's all in a sort of inky style. And I'll just, just so you know what a booby is, there we go. It's a large tropical bird of the gannet family with black and white plumage and brightly coloured feet. You might have drawn some boobies with me. I think way back, video number 24, I think we did the blue footed booby. And the last video that we did, which was number 120, we did the red footed booby. But what I love about this book is I've kept the colour palette very limited. The only thing that's in full colour are the cakes. Because as you know, all red footed boobies are bakers at heart. So the cakes are in full colour. Everything else is just red, blue and green. See, there's the donuts in colour. But I really, really like that and it gives the book quite a different feel. There you go. I've used very inky sort of brushes because I really like it. You know, I always say to you, if you make a mistake, keep on going because it's, it's often those kind of little accidents that give your drawing um, personality. Well, I've really taken that to the nth degree with this because look, all of these kind of sort of slightly scruffy brush marks, I really, really like. I think it adds personality to my, draw my um, illustrations. So yeah, here we go, the blue-footed booby. That's my favourite spread in the whole book. But it's a really, really fun story. Barbara, oh my, what on earth have you done? The cakes, you have eaten them, every last one. So that's a fun book, check it out. Um, and some of you I know are big fans of my novels. So my first novel was called Peanut Jones and the Illustrated City. You know, obviously, I've done loads of drawings in this book. I've showed you it loads of times. You've drawn lots of the characters from the book. But I've got a new one of those out too. The second in the trilogy. And it's called Peanut Jones and the Twelve Portals. Super, super proud of this. And I know lots of you have been waiting for a long time to see this book because you want to know what's happened to Dad. <gasps> well, there you go. Slight spoiler for you. But again, loads and loads and loads of illustrations in this book and this story is all about a pencil a magic pencil that peanut finds and she realizes that everything that she draws with this pencil it becomes real so if she draws an apple with it she can pick up that apple and she can eat it and that's how she first enters the illustrated city she draws a door and that door of course is real so she opens it and she finds herself in a completely illustrated world so that's the premise of the story so the most important article in the whole story is this pencil so i thought today to celebrate the publication of the second peanut jones book i would show you all how to draw a little pencil character does that sound fun i hope you said yes <laughs> right this is what you're going to need you're going to need a piece of paper oh my piece of paper has got a little kind of burr on it we're going to need a piece of paper you are going to need a pen or a pencil, something to draw with. You might need something to colour with in a minute or two towards the end of the video. If you haven't got any colours, don't worry. Just use your pencil to shade in. That's absolutely fine. Now, I'm going to explain how Draw With Rob works. You might not have done one for a while, um, but this is how it works. Lots of people say to me they don't think they're very good at drawing. Nonsense, I say. Everybody can draw. It's just a question of... Well, some people just need a little bit of help with the order that we do the drawing in. That's where I come in, because I can help you with that by breaking the drawing down into little bite-sized pieces. So I'm going to draw a very simple shape on my piece of paper. I'll stop, or you can pause the video and you copy what I do. Start me up again. I'll draw a bit more. You draw, I draw, you draw, I draw, you draw, I draw, you draw, I draw, you draw. Blah, 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 blah. By the end, we're going to end up with a lovely drawing of a little cute pencil character, just like the pencil from the Peanut Jones books. Oh, look, I can show you the pencil in the Peanut Jones books. I should have done that, shouldn't I? Because I put it on the spine. I like this spine. There you go. That's the pencil. And the second book, where are we? The second book has got a crayon. So when they're on your bookshelves, they look nice next to each other. But that is the pencil that we're going to draw, except we're going to give it a little personality. We're going to give it eyes and a mouth and stuff. Right. Stop talking, Rob. Start drawing. Right. The first thing that I want you to do is... I would say 
So we're going to draw our pencil standing vertically. I've got to keep my, my piece of paper landscape so I can fit it on your screen, but you could do yours that way up if you want to. That's probably what I would do if I wasn't filming this. But what I want you to do is about, let's say about a quarter of the way up your page, I want you to do a nice horizontal line, about that wide, two or three centimeters, something like that. Pretty easy start. From the right hand side of that line, we're going to go vertically up our page and we're going to stop about there. So we're going to go from about a quarter of the way up to three quarters of the way up. Okay. You won't be surprised to hear that we're going to do the same on the other side. We are drawing a pencil after all, which is very tall and thin. So we need a tall, thin shape to start our pencil off. Okay. Now, you know that bit of a pencil, let me see if I can find a pencil, here we go, here's a pencil. This bit here, where the pencil is kind of sharpened, you can see on my one here it's kind of straight, but I'm going to do as today, sort of zigzag, you know when you draw cartoon pencils they're sort of zigzaggy, aren't they? And that helps with the bit we're going to do a slightly further down the line. So what I want you to do, we're going to start up here and we want to do, we're going to go we're going to do two peaks in the middle. So I want you to go down, up, down, up, down, and then up to join up. So we've done two little mountains in the middle. So like a W and a V basically next to each other. That's a good way to describe it. Rob, why didn't you do that in the first place? <laughs> you live and you learn, don't you guys? Right. So that's the start of our pencil. Now we're going to draw the tip of our pencil. So from this little peak up here, we're going to go up diagonally to about there. So sort of level with the middle bit of our pencil. Guess what? They're going to do the exactly, we're going to do exactly the same on the other side. We're going to go up. We're not going to quite meet in the middle though. Okay. So we're going to go to about there. I'm going to change from my big brush pen to my small brush pen now, because we're going to draw the lead of our pencil. Now, the thing about the pencil in Peanut Jones, it's got a really long pointy lead. If you've ever seen the great Chris Riddell do a drawing, and if you haven't, you really should look him up, look up his drawing videos on YouTube because he is an amazing, amazing draftsman and artist. And he always sharpens his pencils a bit like this. And I really love it. I started, I copied him basically. I started sharpening mine like that. It's really nice to draw with a lovely long lead. Um, and I just think they look beautiful. So that's why I drew the pencil in Peanut Jones like that. And that's what we're going to do for our little pencil character here. So what I want you to do, first of all, we're just going to join those two lines up with a horizontal line. Then we're going to draw a long lead. It goes right up towards the top of our page. I'm going to slightly curve it into the middle on both sides. Slightly curved. So we've got a lovely sharp point at the end. Then we just colour it in. There we go. Pencil. Easy peasy to draw a pencil, isn't it? But we haven't finished yet. Okay, now the pencil in Peanut is a, because it's a magical pencil, I spent a long time um, describing the pencil in the first book. There's a chapter called, I think it's called Little Tail, which is the name that is given to this pencil. And um, I spent a lot of time sort of describing how the pencil was looked like it'd been hand carved out of a piece of wood and it looked like it'd been whittled by hand. And the rubber, so the eraser that is attached to the end of the pencil is it's kind of attached. I'm going to show you this again. Sorry, I keep showing this. It's attached with um, like it looks like a little tiny miniature silver rope. OK, and it wraps around six times. I'm very specific about that. So we're going to do that for our little pencil character today. But obviously our pencil the other way up to how it is on the spine of the book. So what I want you to do is down here, we're going to do six little sausages. So the first one, we've already done the top part. We're going to come around like that. So it's like an oblong with curved edges, uh, curved ends, sorry. So there's one. We do exactly the same. We go around, try and make them as close to the same size as each other as you can. There we go, two. Should I go into super speed mode for this? I think I probably should. I'm going to draw the other four super speedily. Are you ready? I'll see you back here in a second. Three, two, one, go. Here we go. Have you ever seen four sausages drawn that quickly in your life? <laughs> so there we go. There's our little sort of silver rope thing that I said that connects the body of the pencil to the eraser. 
It's a nice easy one. This is very quick, isn't it? So now we need to draw the little rubber. Let's go back to my bigger brush pen for this so we can sort of match the textures that I've done up here. And all you've got to do for this is we're going to come down on each side about that far, just a centimeter or two like that. But then we're not going to do a square line. We're going to do a slightly curved corners like that. See, wibbly wobbly, just like my lines in the blue footed booby. But I like that. None of us are perfect, are we? There we go. There's our little pencil. Do you know what? Sometimes it's really nice to draw very simple objects like pencils or apples. Apples are always my, I've probably told you this before, but you know, sometimes you're on the phone and you just sort of doodling away on a post-it note or something absentmindedly. I always draw an apple every single time. In fact, I've definitely told you that before because we did an episode, didn't we, of, a, of an apple with a worm in it. I can't remember what number it is. I'm looking at my little chart. I can't see it. There it is, number 35. That's right, we did it with Bernardo's, the charity Bernardo's. So yes, so it's nice to draw simple things sometimes because you can really go into the detail. Right, so there's our pencil, but we, well, actually, first thing I'm going to do, remember I said there was a reason I wanted to do two peaks? Well, that is because pencils, in order to describe their roundness, you know, the fact that they're kind of a tubular shaped thing, something that really helps is if you add the sort of vertical lines that come down from each of those points, because you know they're sort of not, most pencils aren't perfectly circular. They're sort of, if you look at the end, they're a hexagonal shape, I think, most of them. And so this really helps with making your pencil look round for some reason. So we just draw very thin lines from each of the bottoms of those V shapes up there. And go all the way down. And it just helps your pencil look a little bit more rounded. And it's always nice to add a little bit of detail here and there too. Right, we need to turn this pencil into a little pencil character. I like doing that. Do you remember we did the watermelon? Turned the watermelon into a little kind of walking about watermelon. Oh, sorry about that. My computer's beeping at me. Turn that volume down. Stop it, computer. You are naughty. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, and I like making inanimate objects into um, characters. It's just a fun thing that I like to do. So the first thing we're going to do is wake up our pencil. Now I've decided to put the eyes here. So these silver rope things are almost like a big smiley grinning mouth. Okay, so we're going to add two circles handily placed in these two spaces here. One, two, two little circles. Then we're going to do two little dots in the middle that we color in. And there we go. Our little pencil has already got a little personality. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Okay. Let's give him or her arms and legs too. Now, do you remember one of the, again, one of the very first ones that we did, the very first draw with Rob's thing number six was where I did some bookmarks, World Book Day bookmarks, and I sort of dressed them as doctors and nurses and all those people that were helping us at the time of the pandemic. And the way that I gave them their legs was very easy. You just draw a little vertical line with a little sort of curve at the end for a foot. That's quite often how I do arms and legs of these kinds of characters. I do the legs like that. The arms just come up here and what we do, I just add a little circle on the end. You know what, today I'm gonna to give them fingers. We're gonna do one, two, three, four, five little fingers. And the other one exactly the same, we're gonna do our little pencil waving to us. Little circle, one, two, three, and there we go a little pencil character now the eagle eyed amongst you might have noticed that I have not added my favorite thing to add which is eyebrows eyebrows are the things that give all the personality and all that they explain how your character is feeling you do your eyebrows like that they're angry like that they're worried like that they're happy and if you do them halfway down over the eyes they sort of look a bit bored <laughs> that's one of my favorite things to do but the reason I have, haven't done them yet is because I'm about to colour my pencil in. I'm going to colour it yellow. And if I do a little line there, I sort of have to colour around it and it might smudge it all anyway. I think it's probably going to smudge a bit anyway because yellow does tend to pick up black ink very easily. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add that afterwards. OK, so right now I'm going to go into super speed mode and I'm going to colour in my little pencil. You know the rules we draw with Rob. There are no rules. You color your pencil wherever you like. It could be rainbow stripes. It could You could do a nice starry pattern all over your pencil. 
when you send them to me i can't wait to see all your different colored pencils but i'm going to stick to these colors the colors on the book okay because that's what i said i was drawing didn't i so i will see you back here in 20 or 30 seconds with a fully colored in pencil are you ready three two one let's go Okay, so there is my colored in pencil. What do you think? Now, a couple of things to tell you about very quickly. Um, you'll see, you know, uh, you know, we did those lines down there to kind of describe the kind of hexagonal shape of the pencil. You can see I've colored the two outside ones a little bit darker to make it look a bit more three dimensional. And also for the little exposed wood part of the pencil, which is kind of my favorite bit, I've also I've, I've drawn I haven't drawn them with ink but I've drawn them I've sort of shaded them with in sort of three sections coming up from there so again make that look like it's kind of staggered around like that and I've added a kind of a bit of a wood grain pattern there because as I said I really like adding sort of minuscule detail to very simple objects is a really fun thing to do I also added my favorite thing to do ever at the bottom, a shadow to make it look like a little pencil is standing on the ground. And as promised, let's add a couple of little eyebrows just to give the pencil even more character. So there you go. That's how you draw a very simple pencil character. Um, you, uh, hang on, what, what was I gonna say? Yes, that's right, I've got to sign it. <laughs> Don't forget, sign your drawing. I'm just gonna write Rob this one there we go sign your drawing so that everyone can see who has made these wonderful works of art and remember this is just the starting point guys um you could draw a whole set of pencils every one a different color maybe with a different expression on their in their eyes without using their eyebrows to convey different emotions why don't you have a go at drawing a crayon like this one like the one i did on this book here Put it that way so that you can see it there we go a little crayon character you could have a go at doing that or a pen character whatever you want you could have a whole cast of drawing implements and you can write a story about them in fact maybe i'm going to do that i might write a story called something like the pencil case case oh the case of the pencil case it could be like a mystery set in a pencil case the case of the pencil case i've said it now in this video which means it's my idea you're not allowed to copy it <laughs> there we go so I hope you've enjoyed drawing along with me today. Um, I want to see your drawings, obviously. Get your grown up or your teacher to take a picture of your pictures and then post it on social media using the Draw With Rob hashtag. That way I will get to see it. Um, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, that way you'll get a notification when there's a new video coming out. Um, and uh, I think that's it. I don't think I've got anything else to tell you about. Um, it's been really fun showing you how to draw this pencil. Check out the Peanut Jones books if you haven't read them yet. I sort of think you're going to like them. If you like my stuff, you're going to like these books. They're really fun. There's a lot going on. Oh, and don't forget to look at this. Look out for this as well, the Blue Footed Boo, because I'm really, really proud of that picture book. So listen, I've loved talking to you. I'm going to be back very soon with another Draw With Rob video. In the meantime, gang, keep those pencils sharpened. Keep on drawing. Keep on reading. And I'll see you all very soon. Bye-bye. Hello everyone, it's Rob here popping up again at the end of your video just in case you hadn't had enough of my voice. But the reason I'm here is because I wanted to tell you about my brand new Draw With Rob activity book. And this time the theme is... Halloween. <gasps> Pretty spooky, huh? And here it is. Here's the book in lovely fluorescent orange. And I'm very proud of it. It's absolutely jam packed full of fun yet spooky activities for you to enjoy in the lead up to Halloween. What's in there I hear you ask? Well, we've got lots of puzzle pages like this one here. We've got word searches. There are plenty of mazes, that sort of thing for you to enjoy. Loads of pages where I've started the drawing off and I need you guys 
to finish those drawings off. You can add the pumpkin faces to these pumpkins and you could color these lovely ghosts in here. Um, there are some face painting templates so that you can do your proper spooky face painting before you go out trick or treating. We've got a whole set of top trumps in here, spooky top trumps that you can cut out, shuffle up, deal out to your friends and play a game of spooky top trumps on the big evening itself. And of course, it wouldn't be a draw with Rob book without plenty of draw alongs. And as per usual, the pages are perforated. So once you've done your picture in those frames, you can tear the page out nice and easily and stick it up in your window. So all the trick or cheaters that come to your house can see your beautiful artwork. So there you have it, the brand new Draw With Rob at Halloween activity book. It's out on the 15th of September. It's available to pre-order now from wherever you get your books. And I really hope you enjoy it. Right, I'm going to see you again very soon. In the meantime, keep those pencils sharpened and keep an eye out for ghosts. Bye, everyone.